Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Washington. And in Washington, the Senate and the House are getting ready to negotiate the finance reform bill. And to help us unpack that process is Jerry Epstein. He's the co-director of the Perry Institute in Amherst, Massachusetts, also co-director of SAFER, a group of economists fighting for financial reform. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So uh, the, one of the first things to emerge in the last couple of days out of this process as, they, as Congress heads towards their finance reform bill is one of the what look like better pieces in the legislation, uh, something proposed by Blanche Lincoln, actually known as a blue dog Democrat. So I guess everyone's trying to get their head around why she did it, but who cares why she did it? She put forward a, a pretty uh, strong amendment that passed the Senate saying that there has to be a strict division between banks and their derivative trading sections. And now Barney Frank apparently is saying it went too far. They're starting to water it down. So start with Lincoln's uh, p position or policy and, and where it's headed. And what does the, the watering down tell us about the whole process? The Blanche Lincoln derivatives uh, bill uh, kind of miraculously, miraculously made it through the Senate process. Everybody was trying to take a whack at it and get it out. They didn't succeed yet. And it has two parts to it, really. One part. Um, forces derivatives and swaps trading like collateralized uh, cre credit uh, default swaps and other exotic uh, derivatives that help to crash the system. It forces most of those to be sold uh, on exchanges, to be cleared through clearing houses. And that's important because that makes price discovery easier. It, uh, more capital has to put up, be put up to, to back those trades up. It makes it more expensive. It makes them more secure. That's one part of it. There's another part that's the mo more controversial part, where the Lincoln bill says these have to be moved outside uh, of banks. The so-called swaps desks have to be moved outside of banks. Initially, outside of banks entirely. Uh, now, after some compromising, they have to be moved out of the core part of banks into uh, a subsidiary of banks. And the idea there is kind of an extension of the Volcker rule. The idea is that. Um, if the, these banks shouldn't be engaging in these very risky kinds of activities that are implicitly or explicitly backed up by taxpayer dollars. Instead, um, that should be done someplace else. The banks should get to their core business of uh, helping the economy. And this grow. is also so they can't use normal people's deposits to go and play on derivative tradings. That's right. And the other thing is, um, everybody knows that these banks are too big to fail, so there's this implicit subsidy from the government. The government's not going to let them fail, so they can get credit more cheaply. And then what are they going to do with it? If they turn around and start doing that with very risky trades and, and engaging in risky uh, derivatives, then that leads to more uh, instability. And so, wh so what's Barney Frank doing? Barney Frank uh, portrays himself as supposed to be one of the champions of this whole process of finance reform. Why is he involved in watering down this uh, provision? He says it goes too far. What yeah. does that mean? Well, um, the, the banks, Goldman Sachs, this, th this business is controlled uh, by five or six large banks. You can name them Goldman Sachs, a Citigroup, and so forth. They control 97% of this business. There have been estimates that if these, this bill gets passed, they might lose you know, 20 to 30 percent uh, of their profits or more. So they have pl placed a big target on the back of this, of this bill, and they're lobbying like crazy. They got um, Sheila Baer, uh, head of the FDIC, to come out against it, Paul Volcker, even though he was in favor of the so-called Volcker rule, came out against it. Ben but this Bernanke. is much stronger than the Volcker rule. That's right. This is stronger th uh, than the Volcker rule. It's an extension of it. It, it broadens it. Um, and so this is public enemy number one from the point of view of the ba big banks of what's left in the system. And so, I think so Barney is this Frank a, is, this is just caving into that. So is this going to be a litmus test for us if, if they water this piece down? Is there anything le worthy left in the bill? Well, if they, w if they uh, water this piece down, there still will be the piece to move the derivatives trading onto exchanges and clearing houses, uh, which is important be because that will make it more costly and uh, therefore it uh, will make will reduce speculation to some extent. But yes, it is a, a, a litmus test in the sense that um, it just shows that the powers that be from the Obama administration down to Dodd, who didn't support this, down to uh, Barney Frank, the key leadership of the Democratic Party that's shepherding through this financial reform, they do not want to go against the big power of the banks. And you can just trace that through virtually everything that they have done. The, uh, we interviewed Bill Black, and he says this uh, thing is mostly window dressing. 
there might be enough in it to make one want to vote for it, but then you'd actually have to start creating a new piece of finance reform because there's so little left. Uh, do you agree with that assessment? No, I don't have as negative uh, an assessment as, as Bill does. Um, uh, there are some things in it worth fighting for. There's the Consumer Finance Protection Agency, which uh, uh, really will, I think, help reduce some of the worst abuses uh, that the, the banks, the brokers. And is it going to be completely independent? Well, even if it's in the Fed, which it probably is going to be a bureau in the Fed, um, Elizabeth Warren, given the restrictions, it has its own budget. Uh, it has uh, it's a presidential appointment as the head of it. Uh, it has a number of protections. Even if it's in the Federal Reserve, it's not as good as it would be as if it were an independent uh, uh, organization as it would be under the House bill. But Elizabeth Warren, who's been pushing it, and others whose, whose opinion uh, I really respect, say it still will be a big improvement. Because so I, I interviewed Dennis Kucinich this yeah. morning, and he said that, if, uh, that by doing anything that increases the power of the Fed, including this, so takes out the guts of, the, of real reform, that in fact he says he's not going to vote for the bill. Yeah. Well, I think there's an dis uh, honest disagreement about this, um, but I, I don't think he's, he's correct about this particular one. And there are a few other things. For example, the, the uh, Al Franken bill to change the way credit rating agencies do the credit ratings so that uh, big banks don't choose which credit rating agency to do their, their ratings. Um, this gets chosen uh, by the, uh, the SEC. And so the conflicts of interest get reduced. There are a few things like that that I think still are worth fighting for. So my, my personal view about this is that um, as long as some of these important aspects stay in the bill, and they might not, uh, the derivatives reform, the, the uh, credit rating agency reform, strong protections for consumer uh, f finance protection and so forth. If those stay in the bill, the, what we should do is defend the bill, get the bill passed, and then immediately get out into the halls of Congress, onto the newspapers, out into the streets to begin the next stage of pushing for a much D better reform. Does the Lincoln derivatives piece critical though? Like, what if that gets so watered down that it's not meaningful? Well, does if, the, is the rest still worth something? Well, if the, if the derivatives piece goes out entirely or gets so watered down, that is all the derivatives pieces, not just the, the moving the, the, the swap tests out of the banks, but if the whole thing gets watered down, then I would say um, this bill uh, w is not very strong at all, and, and I think there'll be a lot of people who won't support it. Because uh, Senator Cantwell you know, didn't vote, vote for it coming out of the Senate. Yeah. She used this analogy of the Hoover Dam, but if the Hoover Dam looks big, but if you drill holes at the bottom of it, yeah. it doesn't matter what it yeah. looks like. But I should say one other thing about this, which makes it a little tricky, which is there are a lot of Republicans now, and people who are fronts for the banks are coming out and saying, oh, the bill has too many holes in it, it's really not going to do anything. Um, these aren't people who themselves came up with proposals that would really solve the problem. So you really have to be a little careful about this, about completely scrapping this bill, because in, unless it gets totally watered down uh, in, in uh, conference, there are some things in there which we should support, we should pass, and then move on. Okay, let's talk about the process. So at some point before this vote takes place, we'll come back and ask you, okay, how watered down is it? Yeah. And is it worth supporting right. or not? Uh, talk about the process. Now, you, you and others have been demanding a transparent process. What do you think is going to be happening here? Well, Let, let's just describe what the process is, okay. the conferencing. Yeah. And so now it's in a conference. Um, the Democrats, uh, Barney Frank will pick some people to be, represent the House. Uh, Dodd will pick people, both Democrats and Republicans, to represent the Senate. And they will try to reconcile these two bills, which have some, uh, some differences. Now, it's really crucial that this be an open process so that uh, the banks who st are still spending millions of dollars uh, to target the Blanche Lincoln and to target anything else that, that, that taxes them to reduce their profits, um, that has to be stopped. The only way that can be stopped is if it's an open process. So amendments have to be um, put out there for, uh, for discussion. They have to put, post it on a website three days ahead of time so that uh, everybody who's, uh, like the Americans for Financial Reform, SAFER, other groups can comment on them um, before they're voted on. Uh, and is this in place? This no, it's not in place at all. And there, they promised to do this all on C-SPAN. Yeah. Right? And what they're really going to do on C-SPAN is that they're going to meet in the back rooms, and then once they've basically reached agreement, then they'll put it on C-SPAN. They'll have a C-SPAN moment. Uh, we, we have to stop that. It all has to be transparent. And, and best case scenario, that the stuff that you like in this bill stays. Uh, the, the fundamental thing, just to end with, 
in our last interview, you said the real issue is you have to stop structural blackmail. That's right. Is this bill, even if it keeps all the stuff that you think is relatively good, is it going to stop structural blackmail? Absolutely not. And so the worst thing would be for us to pass this and then to say that's the end of the process. The second worst thing uh, would be not to pass a, a, a bill if we protect some of these things at all. Uh, so what, we, uh, what I think we need to do is pass a, a, the best bill out of here we can and then immediately say it doesn't do X, Y, and Z and we have to uh, start the next round to get those things done. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.